Okay, so third part of this tutorial series video, whatever, uh, and we're going to deal with the very first I Zombie level, just titled I Zombie. Now, this is one that a lot of people do first, and it you'll see why as soon as I click on it. It has an introduction, <laughs> which means that for each reset you do, it takes slightly longer. So, really, when you get a layout, if it's in the middle of a run, you have to take it. You can't just reset and get a new one because it's going to take quite a bit longer to reset. And you, most of the time, you're just going to be better off taking the, la uh, the layout as it is. I'm not entirely sure how much time it loses per reset. It's probably something I should know. Uh, I think it's around five seconds, though. It definitely seems like it. So this is a pretty good layout. So um, I'm just going to do a full one through first. Um, I mean, I guess it wasn't technically the first thing, so I talked about why a lot of people do it first, but uh, let's do a full one through. Okay, well, I, I I got that, and as soon as I got it, I was like, wait, what? How has that happened? Uh, I just completely neglected the fact that I'm ignoring the intro, so yeah, that makes sense why it's a lot faster than it otherwise would be. Um, okay, so like I said, a lot of people like to do Eyes on Me first, uh, because of, you know, if you get a layout you don't like, this isn't one you'd reset usually, but it takes ages to get a new one. The thing is though, I don't fully agree with that. I used to do it a lot, uh, a lot of my older ones, when the rule was still in, uh, wasn't in place anymore, but you had to do it in order, are using iZombie first. But I think that you're less likely to get a layout that needs resetting in iZombie. A lot of the layouts you get are going to be perfectly fine. They're going to be serviceable and, you know, it. It won't be as fast as, obviously, if you're trying to reset for the best one each time you do a run. But it's still going to be a lot better than your average free hit wonder layout, for example, or your average all your brains layout. So I, I recommend doing free hit wonder first, um, is what I do first. But this is a absolutely a fine way to start the run as well, it, it makes sense. But now let's get into the actual level, uh, instead of, you know, technicalities about the ordering and what you, order you should do it in. So. This is a very simple level. I mean, it's the first one for a reason. Uh, you only have three uh, possibilities and, you know, you only have one fast zombie to choose from. Uh, you rarely ever use a bucket head on this level. Uh, I haven't used a bucket head in, like, years. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it, there are probably some situations uh, where you can use it. This is annoying to reset on to get a, a good, like, tutorial level thing. But, you know, if you have, like, a pea shooter, a pea shooter, and a pea shooter, you know, and then like a sunflower, then, you know, maybe using a bucket head is the right choice instead of waiting for the uh, footballer. Uh, I don't tend to use a bucket head, but I, I like going for the footballer if I'm going to use a lot of sun. Uh, but, you know, there are some niche situations where you might want to use it, especially if you're not aiming to be the fastest thing alive. Um, other things I like to do is just, you know, wait, if you get a layout that is full of sunflowers or, you know, a pea shooter um, only in this column or this column. You know, even though one uh, normal zombie, so like this for example, even though one normal zombie would do, uh, I like sun too, just because it will clear out the sun faster and you'll get more sun and so you can use that sun uh, quicker. Uh, again, it's similar to, I think it was a free at Wonder video, I talked about it, uh, to that. Um, it's not necessary, but it's something I like to do, and as you, your times get faster, it becomes more important. You just get a bunch of sun right off of that. I also like, uh, so, I'm just going to send two to get a lot of sun here, and you need to, uh, anyways, to get past this pea shooter. Is I also like to send two normal zombies to 
start with here. Uh, if there's a, just one Snoopy at the very end of a column. If there's two Snoopies it doesn't work. But I just like doing that so that I can immediately get off to doing a, a football. Or if there's another squash there, then letting these on, we just get squash. So once it's Snoopy uh, on column four, then that's fine. Just use like a two. You can get away with one as well, but it's slightly faster to use two. So when you see just one pea shooter on a row, I basically always recommend go for two normal zombies. There is a chance if your zombies are slow and you know the overlapping isn't, you get some unlucky overlapping, uh, then there is a chance that both of these zombies will actually die. And you know, this actually looks pretty scary, although the overlapping's been fine so far. Uh, so it should be fine. But you know, there is a chance that both could end up dying. Uh, it's a small chance, and you're more likely to not die, a lot more likely to not die. Uh, but it is a chance of happening. So if you want to play it safe and you have extra sun, I definitely recommend going for three. But most of the time you can just use two. And I already explained why I like using two when it's like this. When there's two pea shooters, I always recommend using three zombies. Basically, for the amount of pea shooters that are in a lane, use one more no normal zombie. You know, if uh, the amount of pea shooters in a lane is X, the amount of zombies you should send in that lane is X plus one. So this is a situation similar to when there's just one pea shooter at the very back. So three will work sometimes. And this one is a lot more variable than the previous situation, because I'd say it's about a 50-50 chance that uh, these guys will all survive, uh, sorry, that these guys will all die, or if they won't. Uh, I think we're good on this, unless this guy, yeah, yeah, we're definitely good, that, that guy's arm just fell off. Um, so three will usually work, but, you know, there's a slightly higher chance than uh, the previous example that it won't. Uh, but, you know, I still recommend using three, um, especially if you're doing this first or very early into the one. Now, for probably one of the most important parts of this level. Not this. <laughs> when you have a Snoopy in middle of the lane, because there's going to be two Snoopies, and, you know, you, so it's important to realise this. You know, it's tempting to just send as many footballers as you can, because, you know, at least they're going to be the speed of a normal zombie. You know, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but at least it will, you know, work. But, in actuality, the most optimal way to play it let me just show this. It isn't great. It's a great example. It's to send a footballer and a normal zombie. Because this is very similar to the shielding from the all your brains part. The footballer has a slightly bigger hitbox than the normal zombie. And so the normal zombie will never get hit by this snowpin if you send the footballer first. Uh, and this, unlike the imp and the footballer, uh, this is always true, uh, no matter if it's not eating or if it's eating or whatever. The footballer will always be in front of the uh, normal zombie, even when slowed down. So, the normal zombie can eat at a normal speed. It won't be, you know, it won't go, it won't walk super fast, but it will eat at a normal speed. So, what you're essentially doing, uh, this is a good layer to show it on, is you're saving 125 sun when you do it because you're basically getting uh, the speed of two footballer zombies. Well, you, you get, sorry, you're getting the speed of a slowed down football zombie, but you're also not getting slowed down when you're eating. Yeah. So while that would usually take uh, three seconds, in this it took about, I think it would be 2.25 seconds um, to, completely eat this sunflower. I might be getting my maths a bit wrong there, but it, you, you get the point. Uh, and it just saves 125 sun as well, so it's... You, you should always be doing this when you see a Snoopy on the wall, uh, but not on the first column. As for things to avoid in a layout, you'll often hear people say that the Snoopy squash is a deadly combination and that you should just, you know, reset if you see it. That's not quite true. For example, if the squash is on the first or second column, the Snoopy really doesn't affect it at all. 
you can just get rid of it and now you have you know what's essentially a better snow peat lane because usually you'd have to go through four um you'd have to go through four plants while slow down you know with the slow eating and all that with this you only have to go through three so that actually saves time um you know having two snow peas on lane is always good because you're mi minimizing uh, the amount of lanes that are going to be slowed down, so you can focus more fully on that lane. Uh, and again, you know, Snoopy and Squash combination is actually really good here. Because you have a slightly, you have slightly less you have to worry about in terms of uh, going through the snowed lanes. When the Snoopy and the Squash aren't together, it's a bit more variable. Uh, you know, if the Squash is in front of the Snoopy, that's fine. But... When the snow peas in front of the squash, it does take a little bit more time. Uh, like I said, though, you can do this, and that will work fine. Yeah, guy got slowed there. So you, you'll just be focusing on the west of the level at this point, and then once this is gone, you can send a footballer or you know wait a little bit, probably in this case. And in this case, it's a bit more tricky because you have to really focus on it. That's like the first thing you really have to you know, fully commit to. So I'd send a couple there to really speed up the eating. And, you know, then play what's the level. Uh, you could, I think in this case, you could send either three normal zombies or football zombies, and it will be about the same speed overall, I think. Um, and, you know, just. But this does get sun a lot more quicker. Okay, this is a disastrous row. This is where the snow pea and squash combination is really bad. Because what ends up happening is you send your football and your normal zombie. And it takes, you know, longer than it would usually take to get to the Snoopy. And then you have to do it again. Again, slow down. And then, you know, when if there's a squash here, then that's even worse as well. Because, I mean, you just have to waste even more time on this lane. So that's when a Snoopy and uh, squash combination is really bad. When the squash is not in the second, uh, in, not second, sorry, the third or fourth column, you know, one or two away. Squashes in the back are usually fine. Uh, they will probably be the limiting factor in the end, uh, in the, at the end of the layout. But I mean, it's not anything you can't deal with. It, it's like not going to take any longer than you know your usual uh, limiting factor. And I mean, it, yeah, you can get through it pretty quickly. Main problem is if there's two squashes, then that will definitely be the limiting factor. Here is another lane where you see this and you just go, no, there's no way I'm dealing with this. This one's more interesting because it's kind of combining the two uh, okay ones to make a slightly less okay one. So let's just get some sun going. This is good because you know you have to deal with less of a uh, of the snow pee. but then. Yeah, you do have to get slowed down here, and then you'll have to go through it, through it all again. Um, but you have to do it like slightly later than you would if it wasn't the snow peas, all that. And okay, we've got the exact same lane, I think, as uh, the previous one, which I said was terrible. Because, um, I mean, this is basically worst case scenario, I mean... <laughs> this is a terrible layout in general, because, you know, all your sun is defended by a snow pea, so you're going to eat it slower and I mean, the only sun that isn't defended by a snow pea on the uh, fourth column is this one and to you know get through that lane you basically have to use all your sun anyways and then and then you want to get as much sun here but if you do this and you're not focusing on the real issue of the layout which is that middle row it's going to take forever and you know you still don't even have a lot of sun like this is one of the worst layouts I've ever seen for this, honestly, which is saying something. Then you have to do this again, and yeah, it's terrible. But this, for example, is great because you have so much sun at the front. You can just get a ton of it. I'd focus on getting the ones with the squash at the back first, and then focusing on your snow peelings. And then you can do uh, whatever else. Let's get into uh, saying whether this layout is good or not, because I mean, I feel like I've focused on uh, the same thing quite a bit now, and you know, there really isn't that much more to go into with this level. So, would I take this layout? This is an interesting one. There's lots of sun at front, there's so much sun at front. But all of it is protected by a snow pea, or in this case, 
you're gonna have to use all your sun to get it to get more sun and then you have to it's oh, well okay that's just a misclick um it's similar to the one i just went for you know it takes a while to actually get going it's not as bad as the one that i went through like all the worst layer of all time but you know uh so this layout has the snow pea and squash combination but not in the good way uh because the squash is in the third or fourth column so it's going to take ages to get through that. And the rest of this layout isn't anything special either. This uh, sunflower is defended by a squash, this sunflower is defended by a snow pea, and this sunflower is defended by a snow pea. So it's very bad layout, instant reset. This layout, however, ooh, this layout is so good. Oh my god. Yes. Oh, I'm tempted to just play through this right now because it's so good, but I won't. There's so much sun at front, and both of the snow peas are at front, so you can just immediately get rid of them without harming the sunflower. And you'll actually see, I'm going to replay that in the uh, in the edit, that um, in that case, when I put the two zombies there, the second one overlapped the first one. It didn't get overlapped by the first one, it overlapped the first one. And when that happens, you know that uh, that zombie isn't going to get affected by the snow thing. I'm not entirely sure why that's how it works, but it just is. Also, I have a thousand foot right? Okay, this one is very interesting. So there's only one lane with um, unprotected sun, but it is a lane of four. Oh, that, okay, okay, I'm really misclicking a lot today. And you can get the rest of the sun pretty quickly as well. And then, you know, send this. Activate all of this. And, you know, because the squash is on the same lane as the snow pea, you have less to work through there. And, okay, this looks, like, not great because, you know, I'm activating the squash at the very end first, but again, it really doesn't actually take that long. Unlimited fact is probably going to be this top lane, uh, so I'm just going to send a bunch of footballs up there. I mean, I'll send another guy down here, why not? And that guy overlapped, so that's fine, mm, yeah. Ooh, okay, so this one is slightly better than you know, if, if there wasn't a squash here, because, you know, you have less to work through. But it's still not good, because that snow pea and squash combination is still deadly. It'll still probably give a fine layout. Um, it'll, yeah, it'll still probably give a fine time. But it's definitely not going to be good, and the rest of this layout isn't... Yeah, I, the rest of this layout isn't good enough to protect that, because, I mean, there's five sun at the back. That's terrible. Ooh. Okay, so there's four sun at the back, so that's not great, but the rest of the sun is very front and centre. And you have this pattern, which is very good, and then, you know, you can send the rest of your guys down here and work your way through. I think we should have this one, yeah, to get through all of this. Uh, top wave probably going to end up being the limiting factor. Okay. This one is interesting, I definitely take it, because uh, there's a lot of sun, and the snow peas are decent. This, this one on the second row isn't great, but this one is absolutely okay. I'm actually going to, because two of the plants have already died here, even though the squash is on the back row, I'm going to send the footballer up the top first, get the extra sun here first. And then, you know, if I'm lucky that squash might not actually hit that zombie and, you know, we'll get a little bit of extra eating power. Uh, I probably should have sent this footballer up here, so that's fine. And that will be the level done. So yeah, there's really not that much to go through on this. Just make sure you use your normal zombies. You know how many normal zombies it takes to overpower uh, pea shooters. Uh, make sure you combine your footballers and your normal zombies to uh, give that extra eating power and way really speed through the level. That's probably the most important point. And then look out for those snow pea and squash combinations and recognize whether they're good or they're bad. So that'll be it for this part of the video. Thank you for watching.